Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. This morning, it looks like somebody blew up the Kokovka Dam in southern Ukraine. The rushing wall of water wiped out entire villages, destroyed a critical hydropower plant, and as of tonight, puts the largest nuclear reactor in Europe in danger of melting down. So if this was intentional, it was not a military tactic. It was an act of terrorism. The question is, who did it? Well, let's see. The Kokovka Dam was effectively Russian. It was built by the Russian government. It currently sits in Russian-controlled territory. The dam's reservoir supplies water to Crimea, which has been, for the last 240 years, home of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. Blowing up the dam may be bad for Ukraine, but it hurts Russia more. And for precisely that reason, the Ukrainian government has considered destroying it. In December, the Washington Post quoted a Ukrainian general saying his men had fired American-made rockets at the dam's floodgate as a test strike. So really, once the facts start coming in, it becomes much less of a mystery what might have happened to the dam. Any fair person would conclude that the Ukrainians probably blew it up, just as you would assume they blew up Nord Stream, the Russian natural gas pipeline, last fall. And in fact, the Ukrainians did do that, as we now know. It's not like Vladimir Putin is anxious to wage war on himself. Oh, but that's where you're wrong, Mr. and Mrs. Cable News consumer. Vladimir Putin is exactly that sort of man, the sort of man who'd shoot himself to death in order to annoy you. We know this from the American media, which wasted no time this morning in accusing the Russians of sabotaging their own infrastructure. Bill Kristol, the man who once told us that Saddam Hussein was responsible for 9-11, immediately denounced Putin as a war criminal and even more savagely compared him to Donald Trump. The rest of the pundit class made similar clearly coordinated noises. Putin did it! Putin did it! And their reasoning was simple. Putin is evil, and evil people do evil things purely for the dark joy of being evil. In this specific case, Putin attacked himself, which is the most evil thing you can do, and therefore perfectly in character for a man that evil. That was their explanation. No one who's paid to cover these things seemed to entertain even the possibility it could have been the Ukrainians who did it. No chance of that. Ukraine, as you may have heard, is led by a man called Zelensky. And we can say for a dead certain fact that he was not involved. He couldn't have been. Zelensky is too decent for terrorism. Now, you see him on television, and it's true you might form a different impression. Sweaty and rat-like, a comedian turned oligarch, a persecutor of Christians, a friend of BlackRock. But don't believe your own eyes. Actually, Mr. Zelensky is a very good man. The best, really. As George W. Bush once noted, he is our generation's Winston Churchill. Of all the people in the world, our shifty, dead-eyed Ukrainian friend in the tracksuit is uniquely incapable of blowing up a dam. He's literally a living saint, a man in whom there is no sin. That's why Lindsey Graham is so attracted to him. They're just two good people hanging out together and being good. And like all good people, when they meet in person, they spend a lot of time talking about killing people and laughing like friends do. Here's the pair last week. Free or die. Free or die. Now you are free. Yes. And we will be. And the Russians are dying. It's the best money we've ever spent. Thank you so much. No, it's... The Russians are dying. It's the best money we've ever spent, Graham says. A smile spreads across his thin, quivering lips as he forms the words. He looks like a starving man contemplating a breakfast buffet. The aroma of death has aroused Lindsey Graham. Thanks so much, replies Zelensky. He feels the same way. See, there's nothing dark here. Just two middle-aged guys celebrating the killing of a population. They don't seem like the kind of people who'd enjoy flooding villages or starting a famine. And in any case, who cares if they are? It's really not your business. Your job is to support Ukraine. Watch Nikki Haley, a Republican candidate for president, explain this principle on CNN. A win for Ukraine is a win for all of us. And for them to sit there and say that this is a territorial dispute, that's just not the case. To say that we should stay neutral, it is in the best interest of America. It's in the best interest of our national security for Ukraine to win. We have to see this through. We have to finish it. See? It's very easy to understand. It is vitally important for you to support Ukraine because it's necessary for Ukraine to be supported by you. 
your support is mandatory until it's finished, whatever it is and whatever that means. So shut up and support Ukraine or else you're in trouble. Back when they still taught logic, statements like this were known as tautologies. Something is true because it is. The more you repeat it, the truer it becomes. It's a self-reinforcing reality. There was a time when tautologies were considered illegitimate arguments, not to mention hilariously stupid. Only dumb people talk like that. Now.